Hey, everybody. Important topic today. Cybercrime is cost uh, costing the world over $10.5 trillion this year. And we're going to dig into how Microsoft is using AI to shift the conversation and the security posture from reactive to proactive, a very important step with Vasu from Microsoft. Vasu, how are you? Hi, Evan. It's great to be here with you. Well, great to have you. Really a timely topic. Before we dive in, maybe introduce yourself, your team, and mission within Microsoft. Yes, absolutely. I'm the Sujakal. I'm, I'm the CVP of Microsoft Security Business. I look after our global security business here, and our mission is to make the world a safer place for all. So simple, yet so much complexity behind that. <laughs> so let's talk cybercrime. You know, costs climbing into the trillions with a T. Um, at a high level, how are security leaders supposed to keep pace uh, in this, you know, difficult new era? Yeah, I mean, Evan, just like, let's pause on that number for a moment, right? Cybercrime costing our world north of $10 trillion now. That's a whopping big number. In fact, if cybercrime was a country, it would be the third largest GDP in the world. So sometimes that just like, when I let that sink in, it highlights the work that we have to do together, all of us, because security is a team sport. And what that means for us is we are doing this incredible AI innovation against a backdrop of an unprecedented threat landscape. We're seeing 7,000 password attacks per second. That kind of totals to 600 million attacks a day. We're seeing increased data risk especially as organizations use AI, they're concerned about data oversharing, data leakage. We're seeing new novel techniques of AI attacks like prompt injections and jailbreaking. And then we have complexity that comes from using a fragmented tool and ecosystem, as well as the lack of talent in cybersecurity. So those are the challenges that organizations and defenders everywhere are grappling with. Our view and our vision always has been to provide the easy button of security for defenders so they can thrive. And we are very excited to build an end-to-end -end platform and now evolving that to an agentic security or an AI-ready platform, Sentinel, which can help defenders protect their organizations comprehensively with new agentic capabilities that uh, now agents can access and be their assistants. Wow, extraordinary. Uh, and you said that AI is becoming the operating system of defense. Uh, what does that mean? What does that look like in practice for security teams on the ground on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, to every single day, Microsoft processes 84 trillion signals. That's a lot of signals. Um, in fact, we have the largest threat intelligence in our industry. We also track 1,500 unique nation state and financial crime actors. This threat intelligence is important because without that threat intelligence, you cannot protect what you cannot see. Now, processing trillions of signals is hard to do just with humans. This is why we need AI at every single level of our defense architecture. We use zero trust architectures. We believe that we need to protect comprehensively. And when we say AI is a new operating system of defense, we mean that we need to build a platform and we need to embed AI in every single layer of this platform, whether we are processing data and accessing it, we are, whether we are creating these, this noise to signals and signals to insights and insights to action with our graph capabilities, or whether we have agentic capabilities like our new MCP server, where agents or security agents can now easily access this data and reason over it. So that layering of AI Layering of agentic AI in every single stack of our platform is what we mean by the operating system of defense. Amazing. And security teams often run dozens of tools at once. Uh, it's so fragmented, really challenging. Uh, tell us about a, a, an approach that, that might uh, replace this, this kind of tool overload. Yeah, for far too long, we have been facing tremendous complexity. You know, on average, I believe organizations are using 40 or more tools. That's a lot. And that coupled with the fact and then that we don't have the talent in our organizations, there's a global shortage of 4.7 million jobs 
in cybersecurity. So we just don't have the talent to fulfill those jobs. It makes it even more complicated. And the way um, we think about this is we need to make sure that we are equipping our defenders and we are giving them the tools to solve for this complexity. So this is where Sentinel again comes into the picture where we are not only consolidating our solutions. So we have Defender and Burview and Entra and Intune, which are the four solutions that integrate 50 plus categories, simplifying, uh, simplifying Defender's lives. And then we bring it all together with Sentinel accumulating this data, not only from the Microsoft solutions, but also the ecosystem. We have 350 connectors into Sentinel. So you can connect your security tools into it and still get that unified view. Because without this unified view and the connective tissue, we will continue to defend in silos while the attackers continue to operate in graphs. So it's very important for us to unify the stack it's very important for us to work with the ecosystem, and it's very important for us to see the patterns forming the data, which is where the graph capabilities that we just announced are critical. Wow, very cool. And you have lots of customers, including public agencies, leaning on Sentinel now. Um, can you share some stories, anecdotes, insight into what they're seeing in terms of real world results? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a large healthcare and social services um, customer that is using Sentinel and they are getting savings up to 50% just using Sentinels. And, and that's an important element as well, because traditionally defenders had to choose between context and cost because it was so expensive to ingest all this data. So often they had to make those trade-offs. They don't need to. Earlier in the year, we announced data lake capabilities for Sentinel. What that does is it has hot layers and cold layers, so you can access all the data and you can store all the data. So we're seeing a lot of benefits related to that and we're excited to make data lake now generally available. We are also seeing large uh, oil and gas companies, large retail companies all benefiting from Sentinel. It's helping them simplify their solutions, it's helping them unify that stack. And most importantly, it's helping them co-create with us because in this process, we're also learning what are the additional innovations that we can provide them. Incredible. I'm also reading the new security co-pilot agent builder. Yes. Uh, and how it lets teams create their own AI agents without coding. That's extraordinary. Um, how are customers putting that into practice? Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up. So Security Copilot has been an exciting journey for us. We announced Security Copilot two years back. It's the industry's first generative AI security tool built on GPT-4 technologies. And then we announced agents earlier this year. We announced 11 agents, six from Microsoft, five from our partners, which was a big moment for us, especially the partner agents, because that, again, is a great testament to our philosophy that you know security takes a village. We're all in this together. And today is that next evolution. So now we have an agent builder, which is part of Security Copilot. Anyone can build their agents, no coding needed. And you can access all that data from Sentinel. So Security Copilot and Sentinel really go together. And the agentic layers in Sentinel help these agents get the data they need and reason over it because data is the fuel of AI. And moreover, we are also introducing a security store so you can publish your agents that customers can easily find and discover in whichever watering holes and surfaces they operate in. So we're very excited because Sentinel, the Security Copilot, truly brings that operating defense, that the modern security operating system for defense live. And we can't wait to see what our customers are going to do with it. Yeah, that'll be fascinating to watch. I'm seeing lots of buzz here on LinkedIn and X and elsewhere on the new Microsoft <laughs> Security Store, which is really novel, sounds interesting. What what does it mean for you know IT teams and um, and partners? Yeah, so first, one of the biggest challenges we had was discovery of tools. And um, I shared with you earlier that, you know, we still have a pretty fragmented ecosystem and we are trying to, how do you like simplify that? So you've got to unify and simplify. And the security store enables that because now in your tool, so let's take Defender as an example, you can find and discover what agents are available to you. So if I'm a partner, I can publish an agent to the security store. These agents are now available for our through products. Mm. You can easily access them. They're available through Security Copilot. 
and then you can use them in your surface area. So one of the biggest challenges was if you do agents, how do you help customers discover that? And that's what the security store is going to help with. Um, we have partners who are building agents. We've announced six partners earlier, and we look forward to having many more along in the journey with us. Fantastic. So I've had hundreds of CISOs and CIOs and other tech leaders on the show, and the consensus seems to be that everyone is still in reactive firefighting mode when it comes to security postures. Um, you know, when do you think we'll be in a, a more predictive, proactive mode? Uh, do you think next year yeah. we'll be in a b better space? Yeah, it's a journey, but I'm excited because today is a big milestone to us, that proactive future. And um, I love the word proactive and I love the word predictive. And the, the other word I love is collective because I think they all go hand in hand. So let's talk about proactive. Like you're right, Evan, it's been reactive. You know, threats happen, then we go and you know, disrupt them. We learn about the insights about them after the fact. But now with this graph capabilities and Sentinel, what it allows defenders to do is really map the attack patterns. And this is critical because attackers think in graphs, but defenders have always thought in silos. You protect your email, you protect your endpoints, you protect your cloud, your data. That's not how attackers work. They might infiltrate through your email, they'll sit there, get access to an identity, they'll move laterally through a network, get privileges and so on. So this graph now helps you understand how can an attacker move through your organization? Like what are those attack patterns? And then through posture management, we already have exposure management connecting to this graph. You can figure out the choke points in your organization and you can start bringing these insights, not only for attacks, but for insider risk as well. So in Defender and Purview, and now you can go and you can prevent those attacks from happening. So that's an important capability where we are moving towards more proactive and more preventive because of these graph capabilities. And then of course, having Copilot on top of that, you can triage alerts really quickly. You can uh, filter out the noise so that you can get to the real problem quickly. So I think we have made a huge stride in that future towards proactive and preventive security today. Fantastic. I really do feel for the IT professionals and analysts and the whole <laughs> industry, the folks, our friends, our colleagues out there, really under tremendous um, professional psychological pressure with the attacks these days. Um, AI hopefully can do some of the heavy lifting and, and the grunt work, but what, what new skills do you think security pros should be looking at to stay relevant, to stay up to date, and to relieve some of the burden? You mentioned a few, anything else? Yeah, I feel for our defender community, Evan, just like you, this high burnout, it's long jobs, it's nonstop, it's 24 by 7, because these attacks don't stop, and so defenders can't stop. And this is why I'm a big believer that AI is going to be such a tremendous superpower for defenders everywhere. In fact, security might be one of the best use cases of generative AI, if not the most serious use case. And um, what we're seeing in terms of talent is it was always hard to train early in career professionals. I mean, I've been in security for a long time and you have this chicken and egg problem. You want to bring in talent, but then the senior and the seasoned security analysts are very busy working on triaging and fighting cybercrime. So how do you train someone when you are occupied 24 by 7? And this is where AI can be such a great teacher for us, because with Security Copilot, you can literally learn about security. You can ask it questions, you can pick any domain, and we are building new skills into it. So you can now have all these skills which are just in your toolkit, whether it's investigations or reverse engineering, you bring those, you bring those superpowers with you. And we think that one of the most important skills for any cyber professional is learning how to use Gen AI in security and making that a habit so that when you are you are doing your work that just becomes an assistive technology helping you. And as agents come into main, as agents become mainstream, ensuring that you are using agents to do some of the most mundane tasks, right? Like, I mean, think about how many signals we face. Like, let's take phishing as an example. The user generated fish, phishing alerts, I think the stat I had was 30 billion just in one year last year, 30 billion. That's a lot. So just triaging that, understanding what is false, what is true, and then acting on that, that's time consuming. So we introduced a phishing triage uh, agent 
earlier in the year, in April. And now defendants can use that agent to separate noise from signal. So that is a skill on how do you use these agents so that you can make your life easy. So I would say to summarize in two things. One is AI is going to help defenders just really learn a number of skills, being their assistant. And secondly, defenders are going to have to learn AI and invest in learning AI so that they form a habit and they use this powerful technology to increase their productivity and their creativity. Love it. Love it. These great new tools that we have have enabled things like hybrid work, the Internet of Things in different industries, cloud, obviously you're the leader in that space. Um, but they've also expanded the attack surface massively. So many industries are under threat. Some seem to be more than others. Education, healthcare are just huge targets. Which areas are risk at most? Where, what are the code reds that we really need to pay attention to right now? Unfortunately, Evan, there is no industry that is not vulnerable to cyber attacks. That's that's the unfortunate reality, and there's no um, there's no enterprise business or small and medium business. We are all vulnerable because it's a very lucrative uh, financial economy for these uh, for the cyber attackers. I mean, think about ransomware. It's a gig economy where you have this attack chain and different companies which specialize in these tools, whether it's malware or distribution system or even payment. So it's extremely challenging for organizations. We continue to see IT, continue to see financial sector, education, healthcare, all of these sectors being targeted. And the attackers are also really relentless. They are relentless. And so that has been challenging to watch. And this is one of the reasons I strongly believe that we've got to use Gen AI, because to the point that you made, AI also introduces new surface areas and AI will also be used by the attackers, whether it's getting smarter at password cracking, mm. phishing and social engineering. I'm sure all these deep fakes that we have around us um, and then new attack surfaces like LLM model poisoning that prompt injections and jailbreaks, right? There, it's just expanding those attack surfaces and it's making attackers also faster if they use AI. Um, so we've got to start using generative AI for defense. Absolutely. So, so many new announcements, so much innovation just announced. Um, any practical takeaways from the security teams that they can apply right now be going, beyond going to your landing pages and checking out all the new <laughs> announcements? So I would say, um, start with the blueprint of your organization where you are at. I would love for all of you to use Sentinel because it is going to be a game changer. It is the backbone of agentic defense. And so please take a look at that. I think Sentinel, whether it's the data lake capabilities, the graph capabilities, the agentic capabilities can help organizations everywhere. And you can get started with it. And then check out Security Copilot. We have Security Copilot as an assistive tool. You can use that as a standalone. Uh, we have agents that you can easily use going to Security Copilot, and now you can build your own agent. So those are the big things that I would say I would love for our community to uh, really take a look at, and I would love the feedback as well. So if there's more we can do, please, please let us know. Fantastic, always more to do. Thanks so much for the update and the mission really important uh, onwards and upwards. Thank you, Evan. Thank you for being such an amazing partner to us. Thank you for being such an incredible influencer. Like we need more Evans in the world to spread how important security is. And I'm very grateful for your partnership. I appreciate it. And thanks so much for joining it. Thanks everyone for listening, watching, sharing this episode, and be sure to check out the new TV show, uh, uh, techimpact.tv now on Bloomberg and Fox oh. Business. Thanks, Vasu. Thanks